Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming or Battlefield 3 related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. Uh, to get the formalities out of the way, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in a future episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a YouTube message. So the first question for today is, what do you think about removing the M16A3, the M416, and the AEK? These are the three best weapons in the game, and it would be a lot more fun to play if they were removed. I always get a bit annoyed when I get killed by the same gun over and over again. Uh, so if DICE did remove all three of these weapons and they went down this route, really all that would happen is you would get a transition period, probably be about a week or two, where people are using all the other weapons, they're trying to figure out which ones are the best, and then you would have the same situation as you do right now, where there would be weapons that everyone would use, and that would be it. You would see them used all the time because they would be the best weapons in the game. And this happens for every first-person shooter. You really cannot get around it. The only way you can is to make carbon copies of everything. So all it is is a different skin on the weapon, but they do the same damage, they have the same recoil. And in those games, while they're very competitive, uh, they don't really have a lot of longevity, and they're usually not as popular because people like to play a first-person shooter that has a lot of customization and they like to have different options to them because if they don't they get bored and they move on to something else so for Battlefield 3 yes the M16A3 and the M416 and AEK are awesome and they are very useful but I don't think they're as overpowered as some people really think I mean I hardly ever use these weapons if you've been watching my videos for a long time now you'll know that I they pop up on a video maybe once or twice a month and everything else is I'm using a different weapon or a different kit because those guns do very, very well. Uh, you know, even when I am going against an entire team that's using the M416, I'm still able to be at the top of the scoreboard because I understand the weapons that I'm using. And while they do have their disadvantages and arguably those other ones are kind of all around good, you know, for pretty much any situation, if you use, let's say, the L85 or you use the AK-74, uh, at long range, you're gonna win those firefights more often than not. You just kind of have to play the weapons to their strengths. So, I mean, yeah, it is frustrating when you do run into those matches where everyone is using the overpowered weapons, but the solution that you came up with wouldn't have any effect on the game. Like I said, there would be a transition period, and then everyone would be using what they find to be the best weapons after those, and then those would be the OP weapons. So you would just have this vicious cycle until everything is, is exactly the same, all the guns are removed, and you're only using one or two weapons, which I don't think anyone wants. So the next question for today comes in from Mr. Rebel, who asks, what what do you think of putting a fight system into the next battlefield? When someone creeps up behind you and goes to knife you, it enters an animation between the two players, but what if they made the animation interactive? I play on console, so I was thinking to counter a knife attack, you would have to press X at the precise moment or you would die. I feel that this would add another element to an awesome game without disturbing the main gameplay too much. Uh, so this is definitely a very cool idea, if not an interesting one, but I don't think it would work on a multiplayer. And that's and that's for a couple of reasons. The first reason being is that if I'm able to get behind someone and I'm able to get the knife animation going, I, for me personally, I think I deserve the kill. I had to stealth up behind them. I had to get into the situation where I could even get it off. So for me, I think I should get the kill and they shouldn't have some sort of countermeasure to maybe switch it around and kill me. Uh, the second reason being, and this is the funnier reason, is that as of right now in Battlefield 3, the knife animation takes a very long time. It's a, it's a humiliating, humiliating way to die because they had to take the time to go through the entire animation and someone could shoot them in the back. And that's usually what happens when you do go for a knife kill, is someone will round the corner, their ally will round the corner, and just shoot you while you go through it. And it's, it's, not, very, it's not a very useful way or a very effective way at killing your enemy. So just imagine, <laughs> this is where it gets funny, is if you are 
are kind of duking it out. You're going through this animation. You're hitting X. You're hitting Y. You're you're doing all this stuff, and it's like a five seconds ordeal. And then like people are just watching you fight because it's taking so long. It would be ridiculous on a multiplayer. It would work, I'm sure, on a single player, and that's why they do have it on a couple of single player games. But for a multiplayer, I just don't see it working. A cool idea, a very interesting idea, but for a fast-paced first-person shooter, I just don't think it has a place in the game. So the final question for today comes in from Spartan who asks, Many times I join a 400% ticket rush game and I'm defending. The two teams, as far as I know, seem equally matched, yet it seems impossible to defend long enough to kill 400 of their guys. My suggestion is what if every MCOM set the enemy team blows up, their tickets restart at 100% lower. So for example, the first MCOM set, they have 400 tickets, the second 300, etc. Uh, so I find this question kind of amusing because I'm not sure if you realize that this this has nothing to do with dice or I don't I don't personally think that dice should do anything or make a specific game mode for this because honestly it's just all on the server admins and I know that a lot of servers will bump up their 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 uh, the ticket count because it makes for long intense games and you see like a thousand ticket conquest all the time I mean on PC that's literally like all you see are a thousand ticket like Caspian Firestorm and stuff like that so I do sympathize that it can be challenging to find a normal ticket it, but when I'm ever, whenever I play Rush or ever I look for a Rush game, I look for one that has at least a reasonable ticket count because you're right when you do go against an enemy team that has 400 tickets to burn through it's gonna seem almost impossible to hold them off because they can make a lot of mistakes they can die constantly they could go negative for all I care and all they have to do is wait for you to mess up just slightly make one mistake and then they've pushed up onto an MCOM and they will of course take it and then move on to the next objective and so this is completely on the server admins or whoever is in charge of setting up the server for making the ticket count just so absurdly high. So my advice to you is it's going to be challenging because so many people do like to bump it up for those long and intense games, but look for servers that have normal ticket counts, at least for Rush. For Conquest, I don't think it's as big of a deal because you're just kind of running around anyways, but for Rush, it seems like it's a more competitive game mode and you you don't want to just have get steamrolled every time that you are playing on defense. So look around, it will be challenging, but favorite the ones that you do find and then just simply join those when you want some rush. Uh, but those are all the questions I'm going to be answering for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Sunday Mailbox. Uh, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in a future episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a YouTube message. But until next time, guys, have a good one and take it easy.